Semper Fi, everyone, and welcome to the latest installment of Recon Jack. I'm your host, United States Marine Corps veteran and living historian, Chuck Lynch. On today's episode, I'll continue to discuss the Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton, which is a major West Coast base of the Marine Corps and one of the largest Marine Corps bases in the United States. The base's diverse geography, spanning over 125,000 acres, plays host to year-round training for Marines in addition to all other branches of the U.S. military. Amphibious and sea-to-shore training takes place at several key points along the base's 17 miles of coastline. The main base is in the main side complex at the southeastern end of the base, and the remote northern interior is an impact area. Daytime population is around 100,000. Recruits from nearby Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego spend four weeks at Pendleton's Edson Range receiving field training. After graduating from recruit training, newly minted Marines return to the base's School of Infantry West for further training. Camp Pendleton remains the last major undeveloped portion of the California coastline south of Santa Barbara, save for a few relatively small state parks. In 2015, the site was proposed for a large civilian airport. Since August 2004, Camp Pendleton has been one of five locations in the Department of Defense to de operate the standard terminal automation replacement system air radar. The STARS radar allows the facility to simulate air traffic for training purposes. Camp Pendleton's base Color Guard has participated in many sporting events in San Diego and at the 1996 Republican National Convention accompanying national anthem performers. Among the more famous performers who were accompanied by the Camp Pendleton Color Guard have been Frankie Lane, Herb Alpert, Wilson Phillips, Jewel, Trisha Yearwood, and the Dixie Chicks, all of whom who had performed the national anthem at either a World Series game, Super Bowl, or, in Wilson Phillips' case, a Major League Baseball All-Star game that was played at what is now San Diego County Credit Union Stadium. In a 2002 letter to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, Marine Corps Commandant James L. Jones stated to the Transportation Corridor Agencies, or TCA, who operates the toll roads in Orange County, Frankly, my preference is that the proposed toll road not be constructed on or near Camp Pendleton. This construction is one more encroachment venture that will hinder our ability to prepare for war. It will also result in additional losses of natural areas that support endangered species, thus placing an even greater burden on Camp Pendleton to protect the region's biodiversity. In 2008, after the rejection of the proposed toll road extension of State Route 241 through San Onofre Beach State Park for environmental reasons, the TCA filed for permission to build on the northwestern portion of the base. A spokesman for Camp Pendleton denied their request in 2010, stating that they could only allow the toll road to run through the San Onofre Beach State Park because their training missions could not be completed without the proposed land. In fact, the California gnat catcher, an endangered species of bird, resides on the northwestern portion of the base. The TCA funded a study in 2013 to remove the California gnat catcher from the endangered species list, which would have made it easier to negotiate the construction and planning of the 241's extension through the San Onofre Beach State Park. Camp Pendleton was built on a wide swath of coastal land that once supported an estuary at the mouth of the Santa Margarita River and extensive salt marsh habitat. Outlying land within the base is made up of floodplain, oak lands, coastal dunes and bluffs, coastal sage scrub, and several types of wetlands such as vernal pools. Unfortunately, wildfire is not uncommon, but it certainly is quite the spectacle. Research in ecology takes place on underdeveloped areas of the base, which contain examples of rare and endangered California habitat types. The Department of Defense has issued management plans for various ecosystems on this territory. Land within the base still includes breeding habitat for birds such as the western snowy plover and California gnatcatcher. The coastal bluffs have many of the few existing specimens of Pendleton button celery, which was named for the base. Rare mammals on the base include the Pacific Pocket Mouse and Stevens Kangaroo Rat. Fourteen American bison were introduced from the San Diego Zoo between 1973 and 1979. They roam the Delta and Charlie training areas, Zulu Impact Area, and Case Springs on the base. In early 2021, there were around 90 adults and 14 calves were expected in April. 
From the perspective of a trigger happy and hungry lower enlisted Marine armed with a fully automatic machine gun, seeing a couple of bison roam near a live fire range is quite the sight. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Recon Jack and perhaps you've learned something new. Stay tuned for more episodes as I continue to explore the hallowed history, traditions, and individuals of the United States Marine Corps. Please feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell, and leave a comment in the section below. I always enjoy interacting with you folks and seeing the growth of this channel. Also, don't hesitate to tell a friend or family member or email me directly to recon underscore jack at hotmail.com. Until next time, Semper Fi and carry on.